So, here we go again. It's that time of year where F1 YouTubers the world over pick their heads out of the ground like Michael Bublé at Christmas to try and give the illusion of a crystal ball. Yeah, time for me to offer some of my best and finest predictions on this year's season of Formula One, which will undoubtedly age like milk in the sun. And seeing as how we know how this whole song and dance goes, we might as well just get straight into it. So, first up, let's start with the bottom of the barrel. Haas. And believe you me, I mean every bit of what I just said there. The forecast for this team for this year? Oof. Them's be some dark clouds looming overhead, and this be a self-inflicted storm on their hands. After a decent start to their time in F1 back in 2016, Haas have been a constant disappointment over the years, and 2024 will be no exception for a variety of reasons, not least thanks to the efforts of Gunther Steiner. He might be a personality, but many know that he is not and never was a technical team principal. He was not someone that was ever going to carry Haas to the promised land. Now, not seeing this for the first couple of years is understandable, but if Gene is seriously going to get upset said that a person he entrusted and hired couldn't do the job right for nigh on to seven years, that's on him. What's more, he can't just get upset that his team isn't beating the likes of Ferrari when he is constantly shopping off their shelf, and Delara as well, and won't invest in what's needed in order to make his dream happen. And if he's unable to do so, then sell the team to Andretti or to Penske, who themselves are already race winners in Formula 1, so that the talented people that you employ can still stay and work while you do the sport a favour and fuck off back to North Carolina. You are not America's team. You never were. Hell, <laughs> for a couple of years, y'all didn't even try to pretend to be, and stop thinking you're ever going to make an impact in Formula 1, because this year, it'll be no different. You're going to start nowhere, and you're going to fall even further back as the year goes on, just like every other year, you loaf of unbaked dough. And poor Ayo and the rest of the team are trying to pick up the pieces of a mess that is entirely your fault, Gene. I'm never going to be invited to one of their launches now, aren't I? You know, it's funny, because I was invited to Sauber's one, and it might be the last time that happens as well. Because this year, they decided to shoot themselves in both feet. And well, yeah, I have an affinity for Sauber, given they've been underdogs in the sport for literally longer than I've been alive. The last couple of years have been rough. And to patch up the time in between now, and their bound to be short-lived stint as an Audi factory team, they've taken on board a gambling slash streaming company as their title sponsor. Now, look, I get it. You need to bring in the dough to keep your lights on, and we can't just run every title sponsor out of town. But did you guys really need to delete comments about the concerns of gambling addiction? Or are the fine people of stake.com really that morally bankrupt that they couldn't care less about human misery so long as it lines their own pockets? Well, either way, have fun scoring those three or four constructors points this year. It might just keep you ahead of Haas in the battle of the mid. And as for the drivers, what more really could be expected of them this year if the car is destined to be in midfield hell? I don't envy them in the slightest. I guess this is going to be a rough couple of years until Audi comes into the fold. But as average a name as Stake F1 team is, it is nowhere near as stupid as Visa Cash Grab App Hugo Boss V Carb RB F1 team, but definitely not called Racing Balls. Team. Now, you see, that's too damn much. And it's not even down to a sponsorship thing. You can maintain an identity while still bringing in some great sponsors, just like I do with Surfshark. And you want to know why I rep him? Well, I'm glad you asked. Our alliance for online stuff has been rapidly increasing. From streaming to keeping in touch with our loved ones to online banking, we'd like to think that that information of ours is safe. But as our online footprint increases, so does the need for proper security. So, in comes Surfshark, coming in to save the day like Clark Kent retrieving a cat from a tree. It's a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet, keeping prying eyes from getting at it. But wait, that's not all. Have you at all noticed that content can be restricted based on your geographical location? Well, with Surfshark, you can solve that problem by simply changing your location. Not only is this good for people who want to keep up with their favourite shows, but it can also be a vital tool for those who live in countries that heavily censor their people for whatever their reasons may be. It ain't quite teleportation, but it is about as close as we're going to get right now. So, secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter the coupon code JoshRevel for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals forward slash JoshRevel, which means for something like a couple of bucks a month, you have the security of Sir Lancelot's race seat. And don't forget, you are going to have those three free months and a 30-day money-back guarantee as well. So what the bloody hell are you waiting for? So, thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And now back to Cash App Grab Visa RB Race. 
I give up. As much as we mock their identity crisis, and believe me, I'll continue doing it, the strength and relationship with Red Bull's main team amidst the domination means we're sure to see some improvement from these guys. Exactly the extent of this, I'm not so sure. But top fives with this team may become less and less of a surprise, I'm gonna hazard a guess. And toward the end of last year, despite still being in a stage where people knew what to call them, they were already starting to get these results. But I am a little bit confused here about Red Bull's intentions. So they're now a proper full-fledged team that no longer serves as a testing ground or a junior team to the main Red Bull one, so they're competing against themselves now? I is that it? Right on. Gotcha. So, V-Carb. They'll have a good year performance-wise, but when they get the top fives or even occasional podium, everyone still won't know what the hell to call them. At least when Doralton Capital took over Williams, they knew not to screw with the name. It's a legacy. It's a brand. Even if they don't have the most money in F1 anymore. But that presents a problem for them, in that it doesn't allow for a lot of room for improvement, while the teams with a billion T dollars can outdevelop you just on the composition of the paint. Although some teams have gotten around that by not using any. And I know people will point toward the budget cap, but even then, there's still the case of haves and have nots in Formula 1. Williams, though, have at least attempted to hide some of that carbon fiber on their car. However, unlike them go faster stripes on Ford Mustangs, this won't do all that much for the team. They're going to improve ever so slightly, but in the backdrop of other teams who will creep further up the grid, it'll lead them to stagnate in midfield hell. And because Logan Sargent is currently driving with the grace of a drunk on a slip and slide, crucial constructors points will go begging. Oh, how I yearn for the debut of Kimi Antonelli come 2025. Just one more thing before we move on. Mr. James Vowles, if you guys do happen to improve this year and you get some more of that prize and sponsor money, will you change your stance on Andretti's F1 entry, or am I expecting too much of you? I'm getting way too angry about this, Jesus. Alpine have the key ingredients to take themselves from midfield stragglers to a team fighting for top positions with their 100 race plan and a driver outfit that can only be referred to as la résistance. But like Williams, I anticipate they too will stagnate in the running order, despite having two amazingly good drivers at the helm and a paint job that screams, we're in trouble. That's not to say they won't have good results. It'll likely be a fairly close battle between themselves and v Cub, Visa, Cash, Minardi, Alpha, Tari, whatever they're called. But eventually, as the race was supremacy within the team heats up, both Ocon and Gasly will start to rekindle some of that old bitter rivalry we had. And before you know it, we've got a damn soap opera which threatens to derail the train of La Résistance. But at least they're not going to fall back down the order. As to Martin, meanwhile, it is said that Fernando Alonso will wait until the season starts and the car's performance is evident before he would consider a move to the vacant seat at Mercedes, if he even is the team's plan A. I don't know, but Mans might want to start negotiating contracts there now if my spidey senses are accurate, with some teams moving up, some have got to go down. What exactly would be the root cause of that, I'm not so sure, and I'm not sure why that would be for Mercedes either, but the talk out of that particular cap right now is disconcerting, because they're either the best actors in the world, or they're going to be in for some pain this year. A race win or two? Not sure that'll be on the cards. At least not without some Mickey Mouse tomfoolery thrown into the equation. Maybe the rumours of Lewis Hamilton wanting an early release to Ferrari wasn't total gaga after all. And now there is good reason, because Ferrari is no longer being led by the Italians, which means now they're a threat. Freddy Vasseur is slowly but surely gathering a group of people that can easily take Ferrari back to the promised land, provided they stop trying to run their power units on rat poison. It gives off vibes that the Michael Schumacher and Jean Todt era did where the mere sight of them red cars made everyone else give up on sight. But like all good things, none of this comes immediately or easily. For this year, however, they will at least build on what they've had, so I'm going to hazard a guess of around about three to four wins this year. The lion's share going towards Charles Leclerc, who will without a doubt will receive the better treatment now that Carlos Sainz has been shafted off to Sauber. Or at least, I think it'll be Sauber. A prediction within a prediction. Lads should have stayed at McLaren, because they have risen from the ashes that they were smoldering in a few years ago. Although, at the beginning of last year, McLaren got off to a dreadful start. A good day for them would have been to score points at all. But as the year went on, they rose to a point where the prospect of them scoring wins was becoming more and more of a reality. And if you're a lunatic and you want to count sprint races, they kind of did do that. This year, however, it seems that they've got a clear direction to go in, and two drivers who are well and truly proven in their craft. So, so three to four wins from this team this year, perhaps. Not including sprint races this time. Not that I want to jinx it or anything, but it's always good to see McLaren in contention for wins. For a team that has been around for as long as it has, that has as much history as it does. Not to throw shade at Red Bull or anything, but it just hits differently when McLaren win than when Red Bull win. Which is why it is with a heavy heart that I must inform you all that the evil empire will continue 
its reign of terror over all those that don't like it. Last year was domination on a grand scale. Although controversial opinion, not all of that was down to the car. The brutal combination of Max and Machine gave way to one of the most gruesomely boring seasons of Formula One that you also had to respect by nature of the fact that he made it look stupidly easy. Inject dihopium, folks, because that's about the only drug that's going to have us seeing the Red Bull camp getting trumped this year. Either that or rummage through Frank Montagny's cabinet. But my point does remain the same. They are going to have the best package this year. Maybe not the absolute fastest car, nor a dominant one, but as an overall package, they are still going to be the ones to beat. So that's my guess on the general form of the teams. So how's about the drivers, the combinations, who will win the teammate wars? Now remember, this is based on who I think will finish higher in the driver's standings. Whether they drove better or not doesn't come into play here. Sound good? C can we move on? Yeah, you're so kind. Okay, so starting with Williams, we can immediately move on to Haas. Hulk and K-Mac were relatively neck and neck over the course of 2023, with Hulk having a stellar start to the year, while K-Mac began to pick up the pieces as the season went on. I can see Hulk being the better driver overall, and thus will remain in his seat for 2025 as a mentor for the incoming Ollie the Bear Bearman. But on the other hand, I predict that K-Mac will finish just ahead of him in the actual point standings. I know that doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense, but that's the world we live in, folks. For V-Car, Ricardo's experience may very well pay off and keep him ahead of Yuki Tsunoda. Though it won't be by a hell of a lot, Yuki might not quite be a born-again Santa, but he does deserve our respect. At least, more than what he actually does. Sauber's battle won't be as close as many think it'll be, because as decent a job as Joe Guan Yu has done in his time in Formula 1, Valtteri Bottas has been the better driver by a long margin, and I really can't see that changing in his third year in the game, unless he brings out some big improvements. Although, if there is one thing that Joe has over him already, he does have some killer threads week in and week out. Although that's not a tough battle, considering Valtteri doesn't really have any threads. LP may very well have the closest battle between drivers. Ocon and Gasly can barely be separated by much on race weekends, sometimes to the detriment of themselves. So choosing a winner here would be a pure guess. Well, all of these are guesses, aren't they? Anyways, as for the winner here, Ah, screw it. I'll just run with Gasly. He's a little bit less French than O'Connor's. Take that for what you will. Aston Martin. Next. Mercedes may view George Russell as the future, but Lewis Hamilton will remind them that it might have been worth paying that extra $300 billion over four years to keep him in the saddle, unless Kimi Antonelli proves to be a goat in waiting. Over at McLaren, things are going to get interesting. With Pastry in his second year in the game, he's going to want to prove his worth. And he will. But Lando Norris, I reckon, will have his best season to date. And all them times where he crumbled under pressure, like the Dallas Cowboys in the postseason, will be a distant memory, never to be remembered. At least when you forget the Red Bull domination. And let me reiterate, it will not be easy for Lando because Oscar is a points machine. Carlos Sainz is one too, but with Ferrari backing Charles Leclerc to the hills and with the Italian influence being whittled away in lieu of reliability and cognizant function, nothing can possibly stand between Leclerc and great success. Aside from himself, obviously. And finally, Red Bull. I wish I could say Checo. I really do. But frankly, you know... Max is a monster. So, just in case you didn't catch who was who in the zoo there, here's a list of them all. Screenshot it, write it down, make it into a cave painting, I don't mind. Either way, I don't doubt this is going to get interesting in the comments, because when does it never? But to round off these predictions, who's going to be the champions? And I am going to include the feeder series into this and go in ascending order. Starting off with F1 Academy, it will be a close battle between those at the Prima Racing outfit, but ultimately, Dorian Pin has been doing bits in Formula 4 machinery, taking wins in both the Southeast Asia and UAE championships. Matter of fact, it will be Prama drivers who will take out the Formula 3 and Formula 2 titles as well. And so, I don't know if it left, but Prama Tax is well and truly back. The Formula 3 champion will likely be Alpine Junior, Gabriele Mini, and the Formula 2 championship will likely go down between the two drivers at Prama. And I'm going to put a totally unfair amount of expectation on the kid here and say that the Formula 2 champion for 2024 will be Andrea Kimi Antonelli. Sorry, Bear. But of course, you want to know who will be the Formula 1 champions, right? Okay, so Constructors Champions, Red Bull. As a package, they've got everything they need. Just. And I just can't see anyone stopping them. At least, not until next year. Or the year after that. Or maybe the year after that. But when it comes to the World Drivers' Championship, I'm all out of hopium. Max Verstappen will become a four-time world champion this year. <laughs> 
he's just too good. I know car this and car that, but A, when has that never been the case? And B, if you give Max anything more powerful than a pencil sharpener, he's gonna find a way to win in it. And that about does it for this year's predictions. If even half of these things turn out to be right, I'd be surprised to begin with. But hey, it's all fun. And that's what we've got to remember. It's important to have some funds and hope that no matter who the hell wins, that it's a good close season ahead of us. Oh yeah, one more prediction to add here. Lance Stroll will get his debut win, just like he would every other year before this one. But this time, for real. Maybe.